This episode of the Brutally Speaking Podcast is brought to you by On Point Palmade. Keep your beard and hair looking on point with their line of palmades and beard oils over at onpointpalmade.com. Use our code BSP15 at checkout and get 15% off your total purchase order. So thanks again to On Point Palmade for sponsoring our show. This episode is also sponsored by the Bean Bastard Coffee. Head over to thebeanbastard.com and pick up any one of their delicious hand-roasted coffees. Coffee lovers will also enjoy their hand-cut and handmade espresso candles and soaps as well. If you're in the Buffalo, New York area, head to their store located at 448 Elmwood Avenue. And thanks again to the Bean Bastard for supporting this show. The Speaking Podcast is proudly sponsored by Rockabilia.com. With over 500,000 officially licensed items in their online store, you're guaranteed to find something you need. Use our code BRUTALLY and get 10% off your total purchase order. Now on to the show. People say you have to have a lot of passion for what you're doing. This rings true because it's so hard that if you don't, any rational person would give up. It's really hard. You have to do it over a sustained period of time. So if you don't love it, and if you're not happy with not doing it, you're gonna give up. What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Brutally Speaking Podcast. I am your host, John, and this episode's guest is Brett from Steak Sauce Mustache. Um, this is actually a really fun chat, uh, fun, funny, uh, and it's funny because uh, when the publicist hit me up to have Brett on, I was like, or actually to have someone from the band on because their album is getting ready to come out. Uh, it was one of those where I was like, yes, and I want Brett, and I go, and you know, she was awesome. She got me Brett, and when we started talking, I was like, and as you heard and will hear, I should say, you haven't heard it yet, but as you will hear, <laughs> um, Brett was on probably a good two, three years ago and the file got corrupted. Uh, and I just lost the whole chat. And it was one of those where I felt bad because like subconsciously I just was like, Oh man, like that dude probably thinks I'm a fucking prick and was like that episode sucked. I'm not going to put it out, whatever. I mean, these are things that we think internally, at least I do that, you know, when you do an interview or you do a conversation on a podcast, like typically you put out the episode and the person kind of knows who they talk to or, or whatever. And, you know, at least I know I usually through the podcast socials will follow you know, the band or the person that I talk to. Um, so I know that, and you know, a lot of times I get followed back, but it, it is one of those where it's like, all right, like, I mean, kind of think about that. Like, you know, that you, you did this episode a lot of times on Twitter. Like I'll be like, Hey, I talked to so-and-so great talking to them. Um, and then, you know, in this instance, the episode never dropped. And I was just like, Oh, I bet like, you know, not to say it in a bad way, but especially at that point, I don't think steaks off awesome mustache was really, you know, touring a whole lot i don't think their name was super well known so it's like i feel like brett probably was like uh yeah man thanks you wasted my time you didn't put out our chat <laughs> so i wanted to rectify it and and kind of get a do-over um because in this podcast world and in life we don't get many do-overs to kind of uh have that second chance at something as as shine down you know sings about and it was one of those things where it was funny that Brett remembered. He's like, oh, yes, that was in my green suit. Uh, I think he called himself the lizard or whatever uh, phase of, you know, things. And it was fun getting to have the conversation. And, and I do feel like it became a little bit one, like I was kind of focused on one thing. But I think I was trying to find different ways uh, to kind of talk about some of these ideas and and. and uh, thoughts and, and concepts maybe behind what goes into steak sauce mustache, because, you know, very much like I did with Michael from Guar, like, you know, I, I feel like it's easy to write a band like this off as just being all joke and, and having no serious side to them. And I actually feel like that that's kind of a disservice to the band. You know, I had, I was reminded the other day with Facebook and time hop of when I wrote a feature on my friends in Wilson, and at the time, you know, they were just known for this party band, you know, crazy live shows, drinking, you know, a whole bunch and all this kind of stuff. And it was a thing where I was like, but I know these people and I know this band personally. And 
there's so much hard work that goes into it between actually taking the time to write songs and just busting your ass touring and doing all that, that it's like, it, it can't always be a party. Um, the live show can be, but there's so much other things that have to be taken seriously. And I kind of want to shine that light on some of those kind of bands. And I think that's kind of what I was trying to get at with Brett at times, but I think he kind of indulged in it a little bit. And I think equally, like he ends up talking about, and you'll hear he kind of is, and the band is, you know, they are serious, but they want to have fun. And that's what the music is all about. And I had a really fun time kind of balancing seriousness and fun with him uh, and finding that line myself. And um, I think without further ado, let's just get into this fun conversation with Brett and I, and uh, I will talk to you all on the other side of it. So it's funny, uh, you and I talked years ago, and uh, the file got corrupted, and I couldn't even release the episode, so... Oh, no, I, I, I do remember. <laughs> your, I, I think I remember, you were wearing your green outfit. Yes, that was when I was, uh, yeah, I was wearing the uh, alien morph suit there. <laughs> but it was so funny, because like, I was like, there's... Because it's not that you guys aren't super active on socials, but at the same time, I was like... Why the fuck would someone want to come back on after I essentially wasted like 40 minutes of their time to be like, it didn't record. I'm sorry. <laughs> no worries. I'm so ready, how have you I'm been? I'm going to waste another 40 minutes. Let's there we it. go. How is, uh, how is the tour going so far? I mean, this is what, your second or third tour with Oakley Doakley, I think at this point? No, this is our first tour with them. I mean, it's the third time it's been announced. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> all right well that's probably why i'm like no you've toured with them before nope you're right because a bunch of tours got canceled and re-announced yep i would do this tour you know every year if we could it's been a lot of fun you know it, it's kind of interesting i was supposed to book oakley dokley when they were kind of doing their first run many many years ago and it just didn't end up panning out for whatever reason but it's kind of funny because like when you get a show like that you're kind of like you think to yourself like who's coming to this show like what kind of bands would i package with with this band and from a from a promoter's perspective i always is like i don't fucking know like do you just go even somehow even weirder in any direction possible and just make it like a spectacle from start to finish or or what and then when i saw you guys got announced i was like that's that's what you do when you book that tour <laughs> You know what's funny is they've actually said the same thing. They said they've had a hard time with, uh, you know, opening bands or, or who to tour with. Uh, and I can totally understand. Um, I mean, you know, from the promoter perspective, but, uh, you know, I, I personally think that they could fit in well with just about any genre of music uh, or any type of band. It doesn't necessarily have to be a, a full on full blown comedy act. Um, but, uh, you know, I'm glad I think that we uh, we fit really well. It's like a perfect matchup and the shows have proven so. I mean, at this point, you know, I, I know you guys are playing the Sanctuary here in Detroit, and I think you're playing on a day that I have to work, unfortunately, at a bar. Um, so I don't think I'm going to be able to make it to that one. But I mean, what? Because I've seen, you know, Brandon Kellum is, is a mutual acquaintance uh, of mine to you guys. And I know in American Standards, they've played with you quite a bit. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I kind of have heard through ancillary stories through Brandon, you know, the baby birding incident and so forth of uh, what to expect from a show of yours. <laughs> but it, it's one of those where I feel like what is the general consensus when people come and see you? Because, I mean, your vibe from everything I've seen as far as the actual music to the videos to everything you do is just about having a fucking good time. Yeah, you know, the thing. here's the thing. In our, in our lives, we're like, you know, kind of adults. <laughs> and uh we got to get up we got to go to work you know we deal with the family life we deal with the house life i mean everything's just crazy you know it's like the house is falling apart and you got to pay the bills and then you know you can't, you can't not pay those and you so you got to go to a job and typically you don't really love your job but um you know everything's just about society is just acting you to just grow up telling you just grow up just keep growing up you know i mean i think i've heard that from numerous ex-girlfriends you just need to grow up and uh you, you know, you go to a steak sauce mustache show and the whole theme is like, we're adults here. Let's just act as stupid as we can. 
<laughs> There's no judgment whatsoever. Do you find that it's hard for people to, to let go? I mean, because it seems like very much like you just said, like your whole kind of mentality of the band and, and just kind of in the presentation is just, you know, life's too fucking short and it's too serious. Like have fun. That's the whole reason you paid money to come out and have a good time and escape all that. But do you tend to find that it takes a while for people to feel like it's okay to do that? Uh, so here's what I've noticed from the steak sauce shows. The first time that people see us, the first couple songs, at least they're just kind of like, what are we doing? Like, what, are, <laughs> what are we, what are we supposed to do? Um, and then if you've seen a steak sauce show before you already know, and so if you're, if it's your second time or your third time, we already know the people who've seen us numerous times by the way that they act and how they react for during the first song. Mm. We know that they're, uh, that they're, they're steak sauce fans. It's funny because we had a couple girls that came out to our Memphis show on this run and, you know, they were subjected to us, uh, unfortunately for them. And, uh, so they, they saw us, they become, they became fans. They, they drove uh, a few hours to come see us at the Nashville show the next day. And after our first song, they just started booing, like really loud. And, just, <laughs> and then everybody around them, they were like, they were like, everybody around us looked at us like we we're a bunch of assholes, but they didn't, but the rest of the fans, they didn't know. Right. They didn't know that we don't like the cheers. We like the boos. It's funny. I just saw a, a video popping around on Twitter or something the other day, and it was a Tyler, the creator show. And when he came out, the whole arena or whatever just started booing his ass. And the lady, the girlfriend of whoever they were going with was just like, why is everyone booing him? Like, what the <laughs> fuck? What, dis what kind of disrespectful shit is that? And it's like, you know, it kind of was one of those like I know in some instances, like, you know, Tyler, the creator is all about the same thing. So it is kind of funny when you can kind of flip the I guess the the norms or the expectations kind of on their head and, and kind of get people to be engaged with it with you. Apparently he stole our bit <laughs> or you, his either way. <laughs> uh, we never steal anybody's bits. We, uh, you know, if, if they think so, then I know that that's just them. They traveled back in time to steal ours. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, um, uh, yeah, so the, here's the whole thing. You know, we play a genre of music that I know to be, it, it's really interesting because it's kind of like this, uh, I, don't, I don't know the term for it, paradoxical thing or whatever it is, where m the majority of people that I know that listen to metal are like the funniest people I've ever met. They're always hilarious. They always have jokes. They're always just, they're never serious. But then you go, you, you talk about metal music and a metal show and it's like everybody there is just so serious all the time. They're just like arms crossed. I got to be angry. This is my time to be like mad at my, my parents or whatever, you know, and I get it. I mean, but then we play and there's always, there always seems to be one person who's like mad that we're being fun. <laughs> and so when you take that power away from them to be mad where they're like, okay, like, I mean, I'll boo, the, I'll boo them, you know, cause like we've, we've played numerous shows where people did not like us. And they were just like shit talking us. So when we take that power away from them, and so it's like, you know, hey, you can shit talk us all you want. We love it. Uh, all of a sudden, it's just like, okay, maybe I'm going to have a good time. <laughs> it's so funny, like, you know, when you talk about that, I mean, I'm getting ready to go to the Megadeth Lamb of God uh, in Flames and Trivium show. I was like, who's the other band that's on that? And to me, it's like, I feel like you look at, pretty much every single one of those bands. And it's like the demographic of those bands is anywhere from probably mid twenties to probably 60 or 70 potentially. And I'm interested to see with a, a wide casting demographic, actually probably even younger with people bringing, you know, their kids and so forth. I'm interested to see if the vibe is about having fun now, because we don't have, I don't feel like any of those bands have any stigma about like, all of our promo folders are like this and, and, you know, we can be a serious band, but we're here to have fucking fun, man. Like, and it's not about, you know, beating the shit out of each other. It's, you know, it's just one of those where I feel like there is so much of that in rock and metal is, is this, this staunch, uh, ruining it kind of for ourselves. Like, like you said, I think most of the people I know that are in, you know, to the heavier extreme stuff, it's like, they're usually really funny and don't take things that seriously, except for their music and the people who listen to it. And then all of a sudden it's like you, it's the most deadly serious thing ever. And you can't fucking joke about it. I, I do feel like you almost have to have a sense of humor to be involved in metal because when you listen to some of the stuff that's put out, I mean, I'm not saying it's bad, but it's like kind of almost like comedic in a certain sense. 
um, you know, like we, we played at a, uh, what is it? We played a show in the Bay Area at a slam fest, which mm. is like some of the gnarliest bands I've heard that were playing there. And we were put right in the middle. And so when we were driving to the show, looking at the flyer, we're just like, let's see how this goes. <laughs> 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 because we're, we're definitely nowhere near like as I want to say as heavy or brutal or whatever, you know, as those bands are. Um, but you know, the crowd reacted in the way that, uh, you know, we were hoping that they would, that they, they enjoyed it. They engaged. We had a little bit of a mosh pit, but mostly people just kind of acted stupid and that's the way we are. You know, I, I constantly think of, uh, you know, like a band like psycho sick, um, and some of these other bands that kind of play into more, um, I don't want to call it necessarily shock or entertainment like just pigeonhole it into one or the other but it's kind of a, more of a a show i would say from lack mm -hmm. of a better term like from start to finish that is it sort of a bummer to kind of feel like your your actual time and effort creating art is discredited solely because it's like well it's not insert whatever fits in a tiny nice little box here so I think that Steak Sauce Mustache differs themselves from a lot of bands, and I'm not saying that we're like on any kind of pedestal or anything, but we do differentiate in the fact that if you just, so if you were to read our lyrics, they're all serious. Um, a lot of it's kind of like depressing stuff almost. If you listen to our music, it's aggressive and fast. And so it has like the, the whole sense of like, this is a hardcore band, you know, with our, our typical math core influences that we have like Dillinger escape planner every time I die or the chariot. And, but then you go see our performance. If you were to watch our performance and put it on mute, you wouldn't know that we were like a metal or a hardcore band. I mean, you would see some thrashing around and stuff, but you'd be like, what is going on? This is like a silly act. So it, it really depends on how you're experiencing our stuff for the first time. Mm. If you're experiencing it all at the same time, it almost doesn't fit. <laughs> It's funny because when you say that, and I think when we had kind of talked about this kind of a lot earlier on in the band's career, it was something where, you know, I'd kind of said, it seems like when talking to you and listening to you discuss, you know, the band, the lyrics, the, the full presentation that were, I think a lot of people would see you just kind of throwing ideas out and seeing what sticks and it's all for, for shits and giggles that to me, I feel like you and the guys are very much a very cerebral brand that band that everything you do kind of has its place for a specific reason. And it's kind of for us as fans or the listeners to kind of decode a little bit of everything to kind of maybe get the fuller presentation of what you're doing. We, we do spend a lot of time and effort into what we do. Uh, a lot of it is kind of like impromptu mm. at our shows. Like we don't really quite know what's going to happen at our shows. If you go to two, three, or four different steak sauce shows, you're going to notice that they're all different. Um, there's very there's similarities, but there's going to be different things that we do, different activities, different games, different all kinds of different things. Sometimes even different outfits. Um, it's just going to be like it's all based on the crowd and where we're at, and then what we came up with in the van while we're driving. But this whole thing has kind of morphed over time into what it is. And yeah, there's a lot of thought that goes into it um, when it comes to our music videos, when it comes to our songwriting, when it comes to like what we're discussing in our songs, when it comes to like just some of the stage performance and everything. Like it's not like choreographed, but it's it's like, you know, let's all sit down and discuss what we want to do. And like, you know, how could we make this work? We'll come up with an idea and then that idea gets changed so many times. And then all of a sudden it's just like, OK, how can we make this fit into what we're doing? right i mean it, it's funny because like i think i forget what you said because it's been years but as i say i think you and i are roughly i think you said you were a little bit older than i am i'm gonna be 38 in september so i think you said we we're right around the same age or a little bit older um but i think our frame of references for a lot of outside influences for these kind of things like you know i think when we had talked initially like andy kaufman was kind of one that we had talked about just mm -hmm. kind of the abstract where it's like i can't tell if you're being serious or if you aren't but like either way you're playing it so right down the middle that it's like i guess i i have to in turn match what you are doing and either i have to be serious at times with this or i have to be kind of playful in order to take on the full presentation of what I think you're presenting to us. And, and I think 
to think of a show and think of writing music in that capacity, I think is so so wild to think of because you're you're just taking it in from so many different parts of your brain that I often wonder too if if that's where maybe the live show sort of came from of just letting go after thinking so much about something. It's like an episode of uh, Tim and Eric's bedtime stories if you've ever seen that show. <laughs> yes. It's uh yes, the actors are acting serious and yes, it's some of the premise is terrifying, but it's also the most ridiculous thing you've ever seen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're 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 big Tim and Eric fans, uh Eric Andre, Adult Swim, just about anything. Well, that kind of perfectly segues into another thing I've been thinking of, you know, with seeing so many ancillary avenues for things like you know you look at uh like little dicky uh and dave it's mm -hmm. like you know he came out as a rapper proved himself as a rapper but all along kind of had this underlying narrative of like i also like comedy and i want to do this other thing and i want to create a show and i want to kind of flip uh societal norms kind of on their heads uh in that thing and kind of make you challenge you a little bit and so now you're kind of seeing more of him not doing music as much and kind of focusing more on, on film and creating art in that space. Um, would it be out of the landscape of plausibility to say that maybe that's something that you've possibly have been thinking about is what can steak sauce mustache be besides just a band? Oh yeah, absolutely. We discuss that all the time. Um, I don't know if you've seen our, uh, our 2021 math core index fest video that we put out. It was about 30 minutes long. I don't think so. I okay, think the so, most recent stuff I've seen was the, uh, uh, was it truck nut allergy? Yeah, that's our, that's, that's one of our most recent music videos. So if you go on to YouTube and this is for anybody listening, go on to YouTube and look up uh, steak sauce mustache and then find the math core index fest stream for 2021. It's like 30 minutes long and it's a performance that we did. It's a live performance that we did. We played five songs. Two of them are, or, yeah, two of them were newer songs. Uh, that are coming out on the next, on the new album. Um, but that was a full on TV show. I mean, okay. there was so many sketches and crazy stuff. And so we've talked about like, like TV shows, documentaries, mockumentary type stuff. Me personally, I don't really like filming. Like I don't really like acting and filming. Um, but you know, I, I work with some awesome talent in this band. Uh, Taylor, our singer is a videographer. So he's got tons of great ideas. Um, Joey, our bass player, is a cartoonist. Uh, Eric, our drummer, should legit just be a stand-up comedian because he's one of the funniest <laughs> people I've met. Like, I'm very fortunate to be hanging out with these group of guys that I am, like, that we can come together. My, my humor is mostly just, like, very cheeseball and sarcastic. And, uh, you know, we come up with some pretty wild ideas, and I think that it could make for a great TV show if we wanted or whatever we wanted it to be. And, you know, we've talked about steak sauce mustache as more than just a band, but more of like a overall brand. Mm. Yeah. I definitely feel like at times I could see this being something that's, that straddles the line between like an Eric Andre and Tim and Eric, or even, you know, metalocalypse to a degree, but something very much in that kind of uh, adult swim, William street style, just, haphazard kind of stuff but i think the fact that and i remember you saying this uh last time we talked that like so much of what you're able to do is because it's it's in-house and you're able to do it cost efficiently because you're not paying someone to do it that i think that that's really where interesting things come from because you don't have to you don't have to pay someone to come up with an idea and then you're like well, I guess that kind of sucked. Or, man, that's actually really fucking cool. Let's keep going. Um, that you have kind of the ability to keep spurning each other on with the most outlandish ideas. And the only thing that really you have to worry about is just the time spent if someone wants to do it. I mean, don't get me wrong. I mean, I wish we had a billion dollars because then the stuff <laughs> what we would come up with would be crazy. Number one, we'd probably buy a hundred hot tubs because <laughs> let's be real. Hot tubs are really the only store of value that exists anymore. If you, if you take a dollar to the gas station, you can't even get a gallon of gas anymore. But if you take a hot tub to the gas station, you can get so many gallons of gas. That's true. Yep. That's a so good, uh, good vehicle. So if we had a billion dollars, we'd buy a lot of hot tubs. We'd use the rest of the money and we would, uh, we could do some pretty crazy things. We've talked about like a rock opera, like all kinds of stuff. We come up with the most grandiose ideas that we could probably never pull off, but you know, if there's somebody that's listening to this that just has a billion dollars laying around that they want to throw at us and do like a Tim and Eric billion dollar movie style thing uh, where they give us a billion dollars to make something, we will definitely uh, spend it wisely. You know, 
interestingly, as you're kind of mentioned, as we've mentioned, some of these different you know artists that are in various mediums of comedy, music, and, and entertainment. You know, we see comedians open for bands all the time. You know, uh, Jim Burr getting to open for Metallica uh, and stuff like that. Would you kind of do the opposite? Would you be interested in, like, I know Tim Heidecker was going around for a little bit recently and, and doing stand up or doing some kind of a live performance. Um, would that be something interesting to kind of flip the narrative on its head and kind of have a band open for a comedian? Oh, absolutely. Honestly, I mean, I'd open up for an art gallery. I don't really care. I'm open up, I'm down to open up for anything. Uh, we will, uh, we'll open up for a, uh, a tape cutting grand opening at the Dollar General. Well, I mean, I think you should hold out for the for the hot tub store opening, so at least you can get I mean, a free dip. I mean, that's that's our re that's our real goal right there. We just want to <laughs> we want to we want to tour America, opening up as many steak sauce mustache hot tub stores as possible. I feel like that's a missed opportunity right there. Where instead of you know at the end of the show, hey, we're looking for a place to stay, you just go, who's got a hot tub? Because we're coming. Yeah, exactly. Yep, I'll fall asleep in that thing. <laughs> I'm surprised you don't get all like pruney and wrinkly. Or maybe that's just me. <laughs> maybe I'm the only one that does that. Uh, so yeah, we we definitely would open up for like a comedian or or any kind of sort. You know, we also want to we, we also want it to be somewhat of a stage that's going to bring some kind of like interest to us. I mean, we're not going to try to go play at like some restaurant like where it's all jazz bands, you know, and people are just like angry that we're there. I mean. We've done that kind of stuff before, and it's sometimes it works out, and sometimes it's a little wild. You know, I'm kind of surprised in light of, and you'll probably correct me if I'm wrong, and, and the internet will be mad at me because I didn't know this because, God forbid, I don't know everything. Mm -hmm. um, but it's one of those things where I'm surprised, you know, thinking of like a festival, like a So What festival, like, you know, just bringing an eclectic grouping of, of artists as a whole. I'm surprised that like that's not something I, I see you constantly doing every year because it seems like that vibe of just kind of showing up playing and, and just kind of playing because like literally you're not playing necessarily to your fans or anyone's set of fans. It's just people there who are there to kind of I think experience whatever the fuck they stumble upon. And mm -hmm. to me, I feel like that would be the most conducive environment for you to a network and b just really grow the band's brand. I guess for lack of a better term. To, to just show up to a festival and start playing? Uh, I was thinking more like the So What Festival down in, uh, what is it, Texas or whatever, down in Austin. I mean, if we could get onto that festival, that'd be awesome. I don't know who I need to speak to, but, um, you know, we're down to play any kind of festival we can. Let's so just say then that's where you kind of go and just crash the festival. <laughs> that's where we just got to crash it. Yeah, just run right into <laughs> it. Just, uh, be like, whatever that band is that's been getting a lot of flack for... Uh, they have that like uh, mini school bus, and they just play in it. And then they like the uh, what is it the like wheelchair ramp thing that they have that goes in the back to help uh, handicap people get in there. Like that comes out, and like the guitar player comes out and has got his microphone and all that shit. <laughs> but there's a couple. There's a couple bands I've known that do that. There's um, Vantana Row mm. that uh, they play at shows. They've played at our shows before, where they play in between the bands. And then there's. Um, Oh my gosh, I can't believe I've, I'm, I'm missing out on their name right now. There's a band from Eugene that does the same thing. They actually were on the uh, Rob Durdex Fantasy Factory. Hmm. And um, God, for the heck of me, we played with them before and I just cannot remember their name. It's a two-piece band that's done the same thing. Hmm. I'm always jealous of like, you know, like a band speaking of the cherry, getting jealous of bands like 68 where it's like, it's just two of you. <laughs> it's gotta oh, be man. <laughs> oh man, touring would be so much more comfortable. Yeah, well, yeah I get, you don't I'm have a, a driver. Little, I'm, a, I'm a little jealous of like the one person acts, you know, where they can just hop in a car and go and then just, you know, stay at a nice hotel and they, they get sleep and everything. But the more guys you get in a band, uh, the more stuff you got to bring, the bigger vehicle you got to bring, the harder it is to find places to sleep comfortably. And and uh, but you know what, though, it doesn't work without all four of us. I think that's kind of the interesting thing. You know, I've been talking to uh, in recent weeks, kind of taking over a quote unquote PR position with a, a band around here. And it's funny when we kind of talk ideas because I'll be like, so I was at this show and I was trying to think like what makes a, a local band not a local band and becomes more of a national touring band that people pay, you know, decent money to go see, want to go see again. Mm -hmm. You know, what is it? And the thing I had the epiphany of is like, it's sort of creating a show from start to finish. Like when you, when you know, when this band comes on, it's not just a collection of songs and they're going to talk to you in between whenever they're tuning, but like there's ambient noise, there's all these things and it's a show from start to finish. And 
it was how do you get that across at their level where i'm like you guys tour regionally and kind of around the states and so forth and have gotten on decent package tours but like how do you get to that next level and it's always interesting talking to different bands because it's like it seems like those that are those that are doing it and those that want to succeed i think are constantly thinking about how to get to that next level of whatever it is for them the next goals they'll put in front of themselves and i feel like that's been the interesting thing like um with you guys is it seems like it seems like you guys are constantly, like you said, constantly coming up with ideas, constantly thinking of ways to keep pushing what you're doing. And to me, it's like, I think there would be a lot of bands that would be in your position. And it's like, it fizzles out after like two albums or two EPs or whatever. Cause it's like, well, this is a fucking joke. And now I don't know. Now it got serious and I don't know what to do with it. Yeah. Well, the thing is, is that we, so here we started out as a serious band and then it turned into kind of a jokey thing, but it's still a serious band. So right. It's like, this, the whole the steak sauce mustache what we are has never really changed um which makes it easy the fact that we're in, we're not a band like you know and there's nothing wrong with this but we're not a band playing on a joke or playing on a gimmick or playing on like a theme or anything like that allows it to open up for us because i just write music that i want to hear and that i want to play and we we don't run out of material to sing about um because we're not playing off of you know one-liners or anything right and you know, we're, we're not, there's no like beating of a dead horse kind of thing, needless to say, where, you know, we were, <laughs> we were known as the hot dog band for so long, the hot dog band, the hot dog band, and all of a sudden we were the diaper band. And then it, it, it keeps changing over and over again. Well, I feel like for me that seeing, seeing those different iterations of what you've become known for, which are, is very odd because I think it A speaks to the fact that I think sometimes fans, especially like you were talking earlier about how you take in the band kind of determines how, what you think of it, I think to a degree or how you interpret it. And I think a lot of times it seems that people see you guys live. And so it's when I think people try to get stuck on how to describe you to somebody else, instead of just being like, they're fucking fun. It's a, well, the one guy wears a diaper or <laughs> it's, it's like they focus on one weird thing that they're latching onto. And instead, like, you know, a lot of times, like when I see a band that I like and someone's like, what are they like? And I'm like, man, the energy is really crazy. The hooks, you know, they, they got really solid hooks, great stage presence. Like I can tell you about the full presentation of what I liked about it. And I think that was kind of a, a weird thing when I've heard people try to describe you. It's like, like you said, no, oh, they're the hot dog band. And it's like, what the fuck does that even mean? <laughs> like, and so at times I'm like, I sometimes wonder if that's almost a hindrance more than a help. Uh, whereas I think if people were to be like, you know, it's really interesting because, you know, they, they look one way, the sound is kind of a little bit different when you actually sit down and listen to it. Cause I bought a CD after the show. Cause it was like five bucks and I listened to it and it doesn't quite sound like it looks. So it is kind of different, but I think you just have to go and experience it in one capacity or another and let everything kind of inform you of how, what you think of it. And to me, that would be how I would describe it. But I do think it's funny because it reminds me at times of professional wrestling, like where, you know, you have your character or your gimmick and then your gimmick goes for whatever cycle and then you flip it on its head and you either become a bad a heel or a baby face bad guy or a good guy. And then you work that different angle until it's time to flip back the other way and you keep it fresh that way you keep interesting storylines you keep your your character progressing and to me i, I kind of feel like the band is almost an amalgamation of that a little bit where it's like you're an ever-changing thing it's not any one thing but it's just constantly changing oh yeah all the time we're, we're constantly trying to evolve based off of what we did um you can hear it in our music for sure uh it's just getting more and more mature you can see it in our performance you know, it's, it's, I can't say that mature is the right word, but it's, <laughs> it's ma maturing in its own sense. But it's like, think about this. Like, if you're familiar with, like, just say Tim and Eric, like, mm -hmm. how do you describe Tim and Eric comedy? Like, there's almost no way to actually, like, because I've had people, oh, have you seen Tim and Eric's awesome show? Great job. And they'll be like, no, what is it? And I don't even know how to describe it to him. It's almost like its own. I mean, it's, I mean, yes, that is in it itself hard because it's like, okay, what's your frame of reference? But it's like, to me, it's like, it's a sketch show in and of itself. 
And then you kind of have to pull from a different couple of things where it's like it's as landish at times as some of the things that Dave Chappelle did. It's equally as, you know, uh, out there and shocky as like, you know, the whitest boys or white. Yeah. Whitest kids, you know, or, you know, some of these other shows from the early 90s and so forth. And maybe that's it. Like maybe it's just because of the frame uh, sort of looking for the breadth of influences maybe that you're able to have or that some of your influences have it in and of itself it just makes it so hard for someone to understand and, and kind of have that you know starting point yep exactly i mean we're just trying to keep people on their toes all the time i mean you could do a uh you could go to a steak sauce show and let's just from me personally speaking i mean i'll be go i'll go from thrashing around like uh you know ben wyman of dillinger escape plan to a full-on staring contest for as long as i can possibly do with somebody it's a very, to, uh, to, very uh, G.G. Allen move. <laughs> to, uh, maybe tapping them on the shoulders and doing a little, and then I'll do a little dance. <laughs> what, you know, something that I find interesting in, in light of uh, talking about kind of the extremity of the shows and even talking about Brandon earlier, you know, the baby birding incident. What is something that maybe has happened at a show where even you guys were like, it might have been too far. Has there, or has there <laughs> even been that moment? I can't say I'm going to hop in the shade here so I don't get sunburned. No worries. Um, even though it's freaking cold in uh, North Carolina here. Uh, I didn't sign up for this. <laughs> um, I don't know that I have anything in particular where I can say it went too far. Um, yeah, nothing, nothing off the top of my head. That would have had to have been something where I could have sat and thought about it and thought about it. I mean, we try to push it as far as we possibly can. And then we're surprised when it doesn't go too far. <laughs> I feel I feel like that that would be like a, a, an interesting psychological experiment to a degree where it's like the you know like you're saying you're you're creating a space and an environment to be free and to encourage other people to just kind of step outside of themselves for however long. But then when you kind of come back to or even when you're kind of right in that moment of, of whatever that you're like, yeah, that was that was too far. That was too free. Kind of need to rein in it a little bit. <laughs> nope. Nope. <laughs> well, I guess that's that's interesting to me to to know that you've not hit that. Um, I we're trying to hit that. We're just like we're we're just trying to get you know people to hate us. We just don't want people to like us, and we try to we try to coax them into not liking us by telling them that they shouldn't like us. That's not just our goal. We don't want anyone to like us at all. <laughs> we just want your hot tubs. That's all we want. We just All we want is your money. We want your money <laughs> so we can buy more hot tubs. I mean, we want to, I want to have like two dozen hot tubs at my house. I want to have so many hot tubs. I have no room to put them. Would you do a double decker hot tub that has some kind of a weird shoot to the other one? Dude, I would do it. I would do an eight a skyscraper hot tub. That would be. I feel like if you're gonna do that, then you have to do like some kind of a weird, uh, like Joe Satriani clear guitar bodied hot tub, like when you go to those like giant uh, things in the skyscrapers where you can like step out in the whole thing, the whole not a room, but like the thing that you're in is see through, so you can see right through all the way to the bottom of like the ground. It doesn't do it. Good. You won't you won't believe this, but everything around me just went slow motion. It was really weird. <laughs> I see that truck behind you is going relatively slow. <laughs> um, I don't. I didn't even hear the question. Joe Satriani. I heard great. No, guys. I was. I was. Um, yeah, I was just basically saying that if I were to, if you were going to make a skyscraper out of hot tubs, that I feel the way that eventually, when you got to a certain level one, like you know, level thirty-two, would have to be like a clear Joe Satriani style guitar, like hot tub. That when you're in it, you can see through it and all the way down to the bottom, and just oh yeah, dude, yeah, hot tubs. Like, dude, I want to build a hot tubs, hot tub space travel machine. Like I want to like, like a, a spaceship that I can just hop in the hot tub. And just fly to another planet. See, I feel like the problem would be, though, once you do that, all the water wouldn't be the same consistency. Oh, we can figure it out. Okay. So now but it's it going to be a self-contained hot tub rocket yes. ship. Okay. Yep, exactly. Okay. Dude, just imagine this. Imagine, like, how badass you'd look if you rolled up, rolled up to your job in a brand new hot tub. You hopped in the hot tub. You cruised up. All your coworkers would be so jealous if you were just chilling out. Rolled, rolled up in it. 
I'd be worried about my paperwork just getting destroyed. We don't have time for that. Well, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> no how, time for paperwork. How can you have a job where you have coworkers and all that, but you still aren't doing paperwork to help do your part? What if your job is just rolling up to the job in a hot tub? I think that's more of a promotional appearance than it is an actual <laughs> job at an office. <laughs> I, I am the guy who will roll up to you in a hot tub and yell motivational things uh, to your employees <laughs> from my hot tub. I just want to roll up to them and just tell them about the life they could live if they own more hot tubs. <laughs> it's a timeshare in hot tubs. It's not a yep. hot tub time machine. It's a hot tub timeshare machine. That exactly. was a straight. That was a straight to DVD release, if I remember correctly. <laughs> just you know what it is. You go. You go to look at hot tubs, and then it's just eight hours of hard closes by six different closers. They're just coming in. They're just pounding on your heart. They're just. What's it going to take? Come on. I know that you really like this, right? Don't you? I mean, if you like it, what is it? Is it, is it me? Is it the price? It's always the price. So, interestingly, the other day I, I had what I think would be a really interesting skit. Um, so I was eating in an outdoor like thingy, and it was like a little shack thing that like basically is see through, so you can see out and around. But like we're a couple of us are eating in there and having drinks, and there's a, a homeless gentleman that was going through, and every like like someone would be like five feet away from him, and he'd be like. Change, change. Can you spare some change? Can you spare some change? And he just was like punishing people. And I was like, Jesus Christ. Uh, like, you're not even letting them get to you to where you're within earshot. You're just kind of mumbling at them and they can't hear you. So I was like, your approach is all wrong. Secondly, though, there was a guy that we had seen at a, a different area that was trying to get people to fill out paperwork, like a sign a petition kind of thing. So then here comes this guy around the corner. And I was like, oh boy, this could be real fun. I was like, that guy's going to try to hit the other guy up for money and then maybe that guy is going to ask him to sign his petition and i go and then for like a hot second they both were standing there and people were coming at him and they're both kind of a approaching them at the same time and i was like wow this is this is so interesting like just watching two people who like have no problems just approaching people like strangers and asking them for things yep. i was like this is like punishment on a level I've never seen of just like one dude being like, <laughs> Hey, do you got a second? I want to talk to you. Are you a registered voter? Da, da, da. Hey, you got some change. I need some change. I want to get. Some... And I was like, Jesus. <laughs> like, and I was just laughing in my head. Cause I was like the absurdity of putting those two together and just seeing what happens. Like is just infinitely amusing to me. Exactly. Yep. <laughs> what, uh, is there something similar like that, that maybe you've seen and you're like, Oh, we should incorporate this into something we do um let's see here i mean we we come up with a lot of our stuff just from our surroundings at all times uh hmm. song names and things that we ways that we act I, I think we were like in minnesota or something like that just on one of our tours the super woke tour i think it was when i just one of us i think might have been me or whatever just used the phrase no more wipey my diapy <laughs> and then that has turned into our most popular live song. Never has it been recorded, but it's all, it's our live live song. In the weird day and age of just people being able to get uh, endorsements in the weirdest ways, how were you guys ever close or would you, had you ever pursued getting a diaper endorsement? Dude, we are all about it. We have, <laughs> we have shot messages over. We have gotten nothing in response. We've tagged them. <laughs> we're the biggest promoter of diapers that seem to exist besides it, babies it's so funny because i feel like that would be one of those where it's like take away kind of this the stigma of like oh it's 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 bad and whatever it'd be like that could be fun because like i feel like you make wearing adult diapers as fun as the people on the box try to make it seem like I mean, oh <laughs> it's totally fine look how the, cool i am i'm the wearing these the people on the box look like they're having a great time and see here's the thing is that a lot of us as adults we choose not to, we choose to ignore those very obvious signs that wearing a diaper is fun and <laughs> you could wear here's the thing you don't have to pee in it yeah you could just wear it for fun it re <laughs> it reminds me so much of the uh, oops i crap my pants uh skit from snl like I'm always, I'm always the few times like when you you're tagging and posting about it. I'm always like, when are we going to get the? Imagine this gallon of iced tea is a gallon of your feces. <laughs> 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 how 
How do you know so much about Oops, I Crap My Pants? Because I'm wearing them, and I just did. <laughs> like, I'm waiting for the steak sauce mustache. Like, like even if you just played, like, I actually saw the other day, which this is, it was serendipitous of timing of, like, lining this up. But I saw uh, steak sauce the other day, and I was like, you know, I'm not used to seeing it literally written on the bottle. Usually it's like, you know, A1, and, like, it just is what it is. Like, you know, it's steak sauce. But to literally see steak sauce, like, written like that, I was like, it's kind of a bit weird when you see it like that, but I was like, you guys can play into that and just kind of do the same thing. Like, oh, just look at how much steak sauce this diaper holds. <laughs> and then, like, you know, or even customize, like, somehow, you know, everyone doodles on <laughs> doodles oh. on drum heads. You can do, you can do it, doodle. I was trying to come up with a way to use duty, but you can duty on a, uh, on a diaper and then sign them and give them away, or not give them away, but sell them. Look at how many hot tugs, or look at how many hot dogs this hype diaper holds. <laughs> where's that meme look at how many you know how many hot dogs this diaper can hold like that meme of the dude <laughs> slapping the guitar or the uh the car yep yep yeah, there you exactly. go <laughs> uh, well this is uh this has been a lot of fun i have to get ready unfortunately to, to go meet up with some friends and go to the show because it's uh apparently old metal heads don't like uh staying out past like 10 30 <laughs> oh so my the gosh. show is starting balls early dude i'm all about it I, I mean, at my age, I'm, I'm going to be 39 this year, man. Oh, these shows that get done at like 1 o'clock in the morning, they are hard. I don't know why, because usually it doesn't... I haven't figured out from someone who used to book shows... I don't think the early show works because like people are still like, you know, my wife and I were joking, like, there are people who are not even out of work, dropped off their kids, fed them whatever, and doors are at 5, and the show starts mm -hmm. at 6. Like, who the fuck can get an arena full of people in? Yep at that time like your your show is gonna i guess to quote unquote play to nobody the beginning the opening band but then it's like the nice thing is the show's done so early that you're like i, I kind of still want to go out maybe for like one drink or something afterward because it's only like 10 30 and i got an hour before bed but yeah those late shows fuck those man those are so stupid and i don't know why because it doesn't seem like more people come later anyway i think it's just uh trying to get a lot of bands on the shows usually these shows have been great it's been it's been two three i think summer four bands and uh you know i've kind of enjoyed those as much as i like festivals too but i think a festival is a totally different thing i think if you're going to plan it as a festival let's just make it an all-day thing yeah, with the uh, the non-struck uh, drum kit that just stays there, and everyone just swaps out their uh, their snare or whatever. Yep, yep. But uh, yeah, no, it's been really good. I'm excited. Um, you know, uh, we do have a new album that's coming out here on May 13th. Uh, All juice, no noise. That will be out on Silent Pendulum Records. We have two singles released off of it right now, which are Truck Nut Allergy and. Uh, now I forgot the name. Oh, Floppy Disk Function. Um, both of them are just cr the craziest, best music videos I think we've ever put out. And uh, yeah, so I enjoyed. Uh, I enjoyed uh, Truck Nut Allergy with the uh, hot dog throwing up a uh, mustard. <laughs> that was a fun one. That was shot right in front of my house in Medford when when we lived in Oregon. Yeah, that was shot right in front of my house. The neighbors thought it was the most ridiculous thing. There was a lot of people that were laughing, uh, driving by and stuff. That was like what. What the hell's going on here? Out of curiosity, whose horse trailer was that? Because I thought that was a very weird thing to just have on the side of the road. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that, was, that was my neighbor's horse trailer. Really? <laughs> yep. Because like it and seemed I, like a cul-de-sac, so I was like, why is there a horse trailer in a cul-de-sac? I don't think they used it for horses. I think they used it for like, I think it was a landscaper, and so I think mm. they used it for like their landscaping like equipment and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, you know, it was. I just got so used to it being there that I just didn't think twice about it. That would have been a great way to uh, throw like little Easter eggs on that thing or something. Just be like, hey, I'm gonna put some stickers or digitally put something on it. <laughs> Maybe a horse, a, a real bad CGI horse. Yep. Well, enjoy the rest of your day in not cold but windy North Carolina. And uh, like I said, I'm gonna try to try my best to make the show in the, the Detroit. I don't think I've been to the sanctuary in quite a while, but you guys don't make it a ton out this way. Nope, this is this is our first time we've ever played out there. Okay, I was gonna say I thought maybe Chicago once, but that was about as close as you got. We we had a show set up in Chicago one time and it canceled. We found out that it canceled like <laughs> the day of the show, but it apparently had canceled a month before and no one had told us that. <laughs> That's not surprising. So 
it is. Yeah, but we got it. Yeah, we got a show in Chicago. We got a show in uh, Michigan, Detroit. We're very excited to be there for the first time. And uh, this whole tour, we're just excited to be a part of it. We're, we're very grateful for Oakley Doakley for having us. And, um, you know, listen to All Juice, No Noise on May 13th. Check out the singles. We got a new single coming out this week also. And uh, it's a rip and roaring uh, good time. Where did where did the album title come from, by the way? All juice, no noise. Mm -hmm. It's just a it's just a thing, man. It's just a, it's a thing meant for interpretation. Fair enough. I figured there would be like a, an interesting like we oh, were driving. <laughs> if I gave away the secrets, no one would want to listen to it. Well, there will give us the juice, and we'll we'll interpret <laughs> the noise afterward. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks again, and uh, enjoy the rest of your day. Absolutely, man. Good to talk to you. So that was my conversation with Brett of Steak Sauce Mustache. Um, I had a lot of fun doing that one. I walked away from that chat with a, a smile on my face. If you are a Patreon person and you are seeing the intro outros I record and throw up over on our Patreon page, uh, you can literally see that I am smiling right now. You may be able to hear the inflection in my voice. Um, I had a lot of fun talking with Brett and getting a, a redemptive chance to have uh brett on the show and and have i think a bit better of a conversation than we did the first time there were some things that we we obviously double back on or i did and i think we were kind of able to approach those things from a different perspective of just you know having more life under our belts and more experiences under our belts to kind of uh inform that part of the conversation a little bit differently um it was funny too. I had sent this to, and you heard me mention his name a couple of times and he's been on the show uh, a few times or at least once before uh, with Dan, when Dan was uh, co-hosting the show with me, but uh, talking about Brandon from American standards, you know, I remember it was funny, you know, talking the baby bird story and I know Dan and, and all the discography discussion people, you know, know that story, but I don't think they knew who steak sauce mustache was. And I did and so that's kind of where it was funny to me because I'm like, oh, man, like if you've never heard this band, if you don't know what their live show is like, even though I've never seen it personally firsthand, it is something I've seen uh, through, you know, the power of YouTube and all that kind of stuff. And it was just kind of funny to see someone that I, I have experienced knowing firsthand and, and Brandon and seeing you know him and steak sauce mustache kind of hanging out and just kind of almost antagonizing each other to just do outlandish shit but i had sent uh brandon this episode uh preemptively and was just like hey check it out like let me know what you think because with there not being a whole lot of stuff and, and kind of my way of trying to be in the moment and so forth i wasn't sure if it worked on this and i was a little hesitant on my end of being like ah oh, did i fuck this up by trying to be too serious um and he said he, it, it wrote a really good balance between the both and uh so i wanted to thank him uh for for being a guinea pig with this episode and uh check it out in the in the positive words of affirmation uh i guess that's my love language is you know i just want a little bit of a uh, feedback and, and good love and uh I also want to shout out something. Yeah, you know, obviously I talk a lot about uh, beer and teas and all that kind of stuff. I don't really talk about sodas very often. And uh, I felt like it's it, it was a really weird uh, moment earlier today. It was a spur of the moment thing. I picked up uh, some, of one of, some of my favorite root beer. And it's crazy to see how far root beer has been <laughs> becoming, um, you know, with all these crazy flavors coming from all over the place, uh, you know, and I actually was in a debate uh, the other day with someone about like, what is the best root beer? And like, how is it the best? Is it better in cans, bottles, fountain, you know, so on and so forth. And I went and picked up one of my favorites, which is the IBC root beer. It's in a glass bottle. It just, it tastes good. And it's not very often that I have like a craving for a soda or a pop, as we call it here in, in Michigan. But um, outside of being hungover, which McDonald's Coke is the go to hangover drink, I don't care what anyone says. I swear to God, the thing can cure cancer <laughs> with with that perfect uh, carbonation uh, to syrup ratio that the McDonald's pop has. But back to IBC root beer. This is some of the best root beer, I would say, in all of the land. Um, I can't speak to international. I don't even know if there is international root beer. Um, I don't know if it's like ginger beer where they have some in different continents and so forth, but for my money, it's IBC root beer in these glass bottles. Fight me about it. Or you know what? If you want to send me a DM or send me a message on any socials, you can follow us at brewspeakpod.com. You can tell me, let me know what yours is. Uh, but I will still tell you you're wrong. 
Uh, so just know that it's a, it's a no win situation for you. And, uh, <laughs> uh be dead serious though i love this fucking root beer so much uh i've almost plowed through the four pack it's almost like they know that it's so good that you have to have it in limited quantities so they like only give it to you in a four pack versus being like here here's a six pack or a 12 pack or fuck it even a 24 pack like beer like no you get a limited quantity of the goodness and if you really want it you got to show some restraint and enjoy your four pack very very slowly to enjoy all of the goodness that is ibc um I feel like that's actually an apropos drink for this episode and, and how I just went off on it, uh, given the fact that Brett at one point was going off about how, you know, the band just wants to be so successful that they can buy a ton of hot tubs and, and you know, make all the money. It, it kind of reminded me a bit of uh, Danhausen from AEW, uh, if you're not familiar with him. He just wants the monies and to be the most uh, rich person. Um, so... Very much enjoyed this chat with Brett. Uh, looking forward to hopefully catching a show uh, somewhere around here if I can in the next year. Um, obviously, they got a new record coming out, so should be ample opportunities for them to be hitting the road. Uh, they're finishing up their run with Oakley Dokley right now. Uh, that band is also calling it a day, Oakley Dokley. And if you want to keep up with Brett over on Instagram, you can. You can find him at Tron Nation 4000. If you'd like to keep up with Steak Sauce Mustache, you can find them at Steak Sauce Mustache everywhere Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or just go to steaksaucemustache.com. I highly encourage you go to YouTube, check out all of their videos. They are a lot of fun. Uh, I love that story about the horse trailer <laughs> uh, that happened to be Brett's neighbors. Uh, it was something I happened to notice. I was just like, that's weird that it's there. Um, but actually totally makes sense. And, and all things make sense in the world of steak sauce mustache because they don't make sense. But they do. But they don't. Um, it's not even worth trying to keep up with that sentence. Just trust that it does. And uh, for the Brutally Speaking Podcast, I am John, and I will talk to you all next week, where our guest is actually another another fun one uh, that we did. Um, I ended up talking with James from Tesseract slash Cage Fight. Uh, I had a lot of fun talking to him, and that's another dude I have been trying to get on the show for a while. You'll hear all about how we almost talked once before and uh, how it didn't happen, but we uh, had a good time. And I can't wait for you all to hear that episode and hear the new Cage Fight record. I've gotten to hear it. In and it is fucking awesome. So until next week, I will talk to you then. Have a good one.